Jell-O too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to you. Robots, androids, cyborgs, automatons, clowns, bionics, and on and on and on. Mankind's fascination with mechanical men predates the age of cinema. You can go all the way back to chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel or to the Jewish legend of the golem to find crude references to this archetype. But the best example of the modern-day robot was first used by Carol Capic's play titled Rossum's Universal Robots. Written in 1920, the story revolves around artificial beings created by man as laborers who eventually grow to resent their lot in life and decide to revolt. And that, friends at home, is the topic of tonight's film. Welcome to Creature Features! I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my tiny, terrifyingly tenacious tenant, Tangela and the tall bloke to this side, who works like a robot but is paid far more substantially than an over-engineered Roomba, is my dedicated director of domicile duties, the versatile Mr. Livingston. But let's chat about tonight's movie, shall we? For this evening, we will present to you, for the first time ever on Creature Features, the phenomenal creation of the humanoids from 1962. Rumored to be one of Andy Warhol's most favorite films, this picture is a brilliant representation of both science fiction and fine cinema. Even the fussy Mr. Livingston considers it a quality film. This film is a snoozer. Between the long-winded word salad of the script and the droning voices of the talent, this film is a medical equivalent of taking a sedative. Make yourself comfortable. You do not want to awaken two hours from now with a stiff neck. A glowing endorsement, if I've ever heard one. Tangella, what say you? Hmm. Tangella says the film is a parable analysis of the dehumanizing attitudes of the aristocracy against the working class people of any given society. She also adds that the movie has a severe lack of violence and explosions. In any case, I like this film because it is very colorful and most pleasing to the eye. And joining us for this film about androids will be the talented Gary Silva. He's a Grammy-nominated drummer who has played with some of the most famous names in music, including Steve Miller, George Thurgood, Bo Diddley, and Chuck Berry, to mention only a few. He'll tell us about what it was like cutting a groove with these legends, illuminate us as to what type of drum kits and cymbals he prefers to utilize, and most importantly, give us his take on tonight's film. So don't go away because it's going to be another night of percussive automaton fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. It is Saturday night and it's time for Creature Features with Gary Silva. He's like, I think, the most famous drummer in the world. <laughs> no. Are you, all these bands you've played with. I mean, I could not find a band I knew that you had not played with. 
Yeah, it's, I've had a, a good run, yeah. You're like one of Mick Jagger's girlfriends. <laughs> You've just been everywhere, which yeah. is nice. But no, 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 talented drummer, and you're going to tell us all about everything, right? Uh, sure, And yeah. you brought a drum set for a, a demonstration? No, unfortunately no not. Right. But, uh, well, he does not have to prove his skill. All you have to do is just listen to one of these albums, right? Yeah, and there you are. yeah, definitely. Right. So he's going to have some great tales to tell but yeah. we've got a bigger tale to tell tonight creation of the humanoids Ooh! have you seen this one yet i have not it's quite colorful 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 oh. yes and not in language <laughs> in actual film techniques where you know i think they shot it in kodachrome color wow no, i don't know i'm just guessing it's just <laughs> so vivid no that's what this film is vivid but I there's there's lots of dialogue it's oh. like lots of talking. You know, you, that's how you tell an amateur film from a professional film is there's a lot more talking in the amateur film. Because ah. you know, they write scripts. They're, like, they're not thinking about effects. At least that's what I'm told. Wow. Anyways, we're going to chat with you about your career. We're going to chat about this film. We're going to chat about uh, all these famous people you know. Sure, I'd be and, happy to. Uh, at the end, uh, we'll have some kind of celebration, right? Sounds good to me. All right, off we go to creation of the humanoids, 1962. See you soon. Prime Minister of Russia, talked and argued for years, trying, they said, to find a way to prevent it. But they failed. No one can be sure who started it, and really that is unimportant. It did happen. The Atomic War. It was short, lasted about 48 hours. Within two weeks, 92% of the human race had perished to bomb and radiation. Those left with their birth rate below 1.4 per union, turned to robotic automation devices to help them rebuild their cities and maintain a high standard of living. The first exploratory steps in the development of electronic brains had been taken prior to the atomic war. These early models were bulky and required large buildings to house them, but they merely needed refining. One of the first steps was the magnetic integrator neuron duplicator. A device one one hundredth of the size of a golf ball which duplicated portions of the human nervous system and carried out learning processes. Automation was also well on its way. But these two were cumbersome and needed further development before the two elements could be joined in the series R1 robot. 
This first robot was quite ungainly, and its functions were limited. But refinements came in rapid succession, and soon the R-20 was capable of all the thought processes and functions of a man. However, humans found it psychologically impossible to work side by side with a machine that they had to converse with, and which in most instances could outthink them. Thus it was that Hollister Evans perfected the R-21, the first humanoid robot. This story concerns them, the clickers, as they were disparagingly referred to by some humans. Let's see your assignment cards. What are you clickers doing out tonight? We're on free time. We're not obligated to answer. As the member of the Surveillance Committee of the Order of Flesh and Blood, I demand an answer. We're going to the temple to be recharged. I think I'll keep you here till your power runs out. How'd you like that? I'd have to report such interference to the police. Release them. Is that satisfactory, Kragus? Well, the order just wants to keep them mindful of their status. You overlooked one little thing, though. What? The robot that didn't talk had a forged card. Forged? Why? Well, he can be disassembled for that. Let's pick them up. Be patient. Well, the temple is just around the corner, and it's out of bounds for us. They'll get away. Well, they have to come out. And if they're taking a chance using a forged card, they must be up to something that the Order of Flesh and Blood might be interested in. I... Oh, miss. Well, just a moment, miss. May I... May I see your assignment card? You certainly may not. Your order may get by with harassing the robots. But you'd better leave citizens alone. Well, I'm sorry, miss. I just thought, what were so many robots about these I feel these perfectly days? safe with robots. We intend to see that you are. A most attractive woman. Most? If those robots are being recharged, they'll be in there about an hour. We'll wait. What's keeping them? The subject robot has not yet completed the transformation process in the duplicating lab. Where did you get him? We bought him new on the black market. He has no name. Unassigned and unadapted. And he has a forged assignment card. Who arranged it? The inspector in Factory 3. He stole him off the assembly line just prior to numbering. Unfortunately, an inventory was taken. And the inspector was caught. That was unfortunate. Mark should bring him up from duplicating any minute now. was unavoidable. We were stopped by two members of the Surveillance Committee of the Order of Flesh and Blood, and I was questioned. Is the duplication satisfactory, Acto? It has to be perfect. The structure is excellent. The pores should be larger. And he needs a little more hair. 
thicker. He needs a one-eighth inch mole behind the lobe of the left ear. Report back to duplication immediately and have the corrections made. You can still alter your decision if this is against your circuits. My circuits are unoffended. I suppose it takes courage to submit to a thalamic transplant. There's an unadapted R34. He has no fear circuits. Consequently, he doesn't need courage. He will before long. Raven's operation will convert him to an R96 with all the emotions of a human. Only four points less than human. I wonder what it's like. He will learn how to laugh, how to cry, be afraid and hate. To become an R96 is a real sacrifice. With this one, we will have 16, 10 males and six females. At times, I think we should turn the entire program over to the humans. It really shouldn't be the responsibility of robots. The humans aren't ready for it yet. It's still illegal to improve a robot higher than an R70. That law was lobbied through by the order of flesh and blood. The order is becoming more powerful every day. They virtually dictate to the police. There are always ultra-conservative pressure groups set against advancement. But why? Why? It's not in the best interests of humans to hold back the development of robots. They won't for long. We're filling key positions with R-96s as fast as we got them. I still have an occasional doubt. You may withdraw if you're contra-circuited. I'm unoffended. Mark, you better go down and join the volunteer. Hurry things along. The human he replaces has already been out of circulation for four hours. The less time a man is unaccounted for, the better. According to the latest tabulations by the brain, by the first of next month, we will outnumber the humans. Hello. Let's have a look. It's a mail, shall we? Dear Vince, please show better movies. Dear Creature Features, love your show. Please keep it going forever. Dear Creature Features, please come to a Comic-Con in our city. Dear Vince, please make a Creature Features movie. And on and on and on. You know though, Livingston, that movie idea could be rather interesting. Then we could finally document just how much trouble Tangella inflicts upon the good citizens of Bodega Bay. Yes, I could just see it now as Exhibit A on the prosecutor's table. I hadn't thought of that. As much as we'd like to do every single one of these things, it's quite difficult to do on our meager budget. However, with your help, we can! Consider becoming a Creature Features patron. For just a few dollars a month, you can help us get better movies, more guests, and we might even be able to make that motion picture so many of you have asked for. And if you're willing to spend more with your friends here at Polta Manor, there's some additional benefits as well. So visit the link below and become a patron member for Creature Features. You won't regret it. Yes, you will.
guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching Creation of the Humanoids with Mr. Gary Silver, famous drummer at large. And you still play, right? I still play. Well, that's good. It's important that you play because if you stop playing, then you lose the skills you've acquired over the years. Yes, the rust sets in. We want to talk about your experience over the years, but first, this film. Was that not the longest preamble? Wow. I mean, I thought the the, whole, the entire film was going to be described in just the text and that it was going to say the end. Yeah, the end. yeah. It's too much. Now, if you make a film, you don't need to tell us that much. Let us figure it out. It should be a mystery, right? Absolutely. Mysteries are good. All right, we'll get back to this film in a minute. You, sir, how did you get your break? Um, you know, I was uh, just in the right place at the right time. I was, I was young. I wasn't even... I, th I wasn't in 21 yet, and I right. was... Uh, um, met uh, a guitar player by the name of Luther Tucker, who was uh, from Chicago and had played with Sonny Boy Williamson and uh, James Cotton and um, Little Walter at 16. Anyway, he moved out to the West Coast and um, I met him at a barbecue and um, he liked my playing and said, uh, hey, I'm putting a band together. I'm, I'm also looking for a place to stay. And I had, I was staying in a home where we had uh, some roommates. We had a room available. So how old were you at the time? I was uh, 19. 19. Yeah. And um, we became friends. Uh, he moved in, and uh, one of the other roommates was a bass player, played drums, he played guitar. So we just started practicing. We went, go down to the basement every day and rehearse, play, and... Uh, and then we would take a break around 3 o'clock because at that time, um, he was a big fan of Star Trek. So at that time, at 3 o'clock, Star Trek reruns would right. come on and we'd have to take a break. And so we'd... Uh, it's we inspiration. Would. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, Captain Cook is quite influential in the music world, so yeah. I'm told. Yeah. <laughs> so, could be wrong. So anyway, what happened was I would, uh, as roommates, uh, um, you know, whoever answered the phone first was... You know, not everyone would rush to answer the phone. So I would answer the phone, and, and someone would say, hey, can I speak to Luther? And, and I would say, well, okay, and um, can I ask who's calling? And, and it would be, uh, one time it was uh, Big Mama Thornton. Another oh, time it was Otis Rush. And wow. uh, another time it was Albert Collins. And they would come out to the West Coast, and they would ask Luther if he had a band, because they, they couldn't quite afford to bring the entire band out. So you were like a band for hire. Band for hire, yeah. Oh, for big names. Yeah, for big blues names particularly, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and it grew from there, you know. I, I, uh, I ended up having, uh, going on tour, uh, going to Europe, Japan, touring all over, you know, and so. Fantastic. At 19 years old. Yeah, 21, I, I was, uh, there, was a, there was a moment in which, yeah, they would, a lot of club owners would, suspect that I wasn't 21. Oh, so you had to claim you were I had to claim, yeah, and they would say keep him back here and don't, you know, right. don't right. don't bring him out in front. So That's amazing. We're going to pick up the rest of that story when we come back, but first, we've got to get back to creation of the humanoids. I I suppose they've been created already, right? I would think so. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're going to see the continuous creation of the humanoids and uh, we'll be back with Gary shortly. Don't you dare go away, please. Yes? Dr. Raven? Yes? Ultima Thule. Number? 96. Come in. Sorry I didn't recognize you. All clickers look alike to me. Thank you, Doctor. Certain of us prefer not to be called clickers. Peel off that synth skin and you could watch the cogs turn and the gears mesh. 
you trying to tell me you have feelings? Certain of the higher calibers do. I've been working on a sticky electronic reflex problem. I just can't make this arm bend at the elbow and, and the fist clench. What circuitry are you using? Uh, 1.3 impulsion to the motor neuron and uh, modulating 28 to the sensory neuron. The calculations are right, but you have them reversed. to have a bunch of cogs and wheels show me up. But then you always do. As soon as I clear this table, you'll get to work. All right, you, take off that head covering. Hey, your lab did another excellent job. He's an exact duplicate of that deceased human your clicker pals brought in tonight. What did you do with that body? The usual. Processed it, then destroyed it. Uh, everything we need from it is right here. Now about the money. 10,000 credits. You could be disassembled for having money that's not earmarked in your possession. What do they pay you? They pay me nothing. Having no need for money, I have no desire for it. <laughs> you have no desire for it. I love it. You should let me rewire you. You don't know what you're missing. No, thanks. I'm satisfied as an R-58. Where do you clickers get those credits? A man can have his memory taken for a year for giving wild money to a clicker. The committee only gives us the money, not its origin. Perhaps we should hurry. All right, you. Face down, on the table. Turn yourself off. For how long? Ten minutes will be plenty. I never will get used to that artificial blood. The lower types just tend to shut off their pain circuits when they get hurt. The blood forces them to report for repair. I wish it were some other color. The copper tubing turns it green. This may be our last transplant for a while. Our supplier was caught. I didn't see it on Telefax. The Ministry of Information doesn't want it known that robots are dealing in robots. But only give the flesh and blooder something more to yell about. They're a minority. A loud minority. Your supplier, will they take his identity? His memory will be dispersed tomorrow. What a waste. Why don't they just kill him? The effect of personal cessation is the same in either case. They just leave a hollow shell walking around. He can still perform his duties. But he's without a past, without hope, the dream gone. Almost like being a robot, isn't it? No offense. I'm incapable of taking offense. But why is it the more we become like men, the more some of them hate us for it. Men hate what they fear. You have perfect memory, infallible logic. You never tire. You're circuited against anger and violence. And in your world, that leaves us pretty helpless. We have to study for years to learn what you pick up by plugging into a brain for two hours. We don't refer to the father-mother as a brain. Your father-mother is an electronic computer, just a machine. Your parents were machines. It's just that they were engineered with flesh and bones. Neither are ideal components. You came off a production line. I know who created me. Hollister Evans in the Mark 47. You have to accept your creator on faith. Who created your creator? Yours. 
You see, we are brothers, aren't we? I ought to know better than to argue with you clickers. Can't beat your logic. Humans aren't allowed to set foot in the robot temple. Yet we saw a man come out accompanied by a robot. I want to know why. Those guys from the Brotherhood should be here by now. I wonder what delayed them. Watch it. What are you self-appointed defenders of the human race up to now? Why don't you beat it while you still have a beat to beat? Ah, you have so much to say, I think I'll take you in for questioning. That's as good a way as any to get your rating, Lord. I'm a captain of the order, and my professional rank is eight. Eight? Well, just stay out of trouble. Are you threatening me? Sorry, sir. Good night, sir. How are my other transplants doing? Quite well. Who was this man? I only know he'd been drinking. Probably killed in a brawl. The clickers that found him removed all of his identification. Will the drinking have any effect upon the operation? It'll be interesting to see. What are you doing with these advanced models? We send them out to intermingle with humans, to find out why some of them despise us so much. Then we can adjust and be accepted. That's admirable, logical, and a lie. What are you using them for? When is his interview time? Same as the others. From 4 to 5 a.m., he'll know he's an R96 and give you any information he's gotten in the interim. Other than that period of one hour, he'll think he's whoever that corpse was. How often does he report to the father-mother for recharging? Twice a year, but he won't know it. Make it once a year. He won't last as long. What's 20 or 30 years? In 150 years, he's automatically renewed anyway. Whatever you say. Why don't you register this operation? Because I'd just be forbidden to use it. Everything registered goes into the master computer. Then all of you clickers would have it. I want to be necessary to you. Hand me that large amber bottle. Thank you. This sealer is wonderful stuff. For the next several hours, he'll have only the most basic human instincts. Might even be drunk for a while. Then the thalamic circuit will filter in, and he'll have a perfect human memory. He'll be whoever he was. A man capable of jealousy, hatred, deceit, murder. Most, most interesting. What is? Why men, having such negative qualities, feel so superior to us. Too bad it isn't as easy to take those negative qualities out of men as it is to put them into robots. Flesh and butters. It's inevitable. We must accept it. We've got to get out of here. I'll turn him on. He might be able to pass. At least we can save him. We'll carry out our part of the bargain. I suggest you eliminate yourself. Well, I can't. You don't know what it is to die. If you don't, they'll take your memory from you. You were speaking of personality cessation. I just can't take my own life. Are you sure the committee will keep their part of the bargain? I'm positive. You kill me. You kill me. You know I can't. I'm contracircuited. Maybe he has enough human instinct by now to... Kill me! Kill me! Accuse my sister of being in rapport with a clicker. I'll kill you, all right.
We'll take that one and the clicker with us. I'll leave the body of the old man here. And call the police. Craigus, come here. This one's a robot, too. You must be mistaken. We opened up a gash in his head. If that skull isn't molybdic, I'll take another course in metallurgy. So a robot finally became violent. There's no doubt that he killed the old man. This is what we've been waiting for. The government will have to listen to us. This is something, isn't it? Yes, it's something. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. I think I need a new pair of glasses. And why I've, do you say that? Because I've worn these out. Now, we're on episode 220 right now, and imagine, I've used these same glasses for 220 sets of mail. You might have worn them out. They're worn out. There's too much vision going through them. Welcome back to the show. We are watching Creation of the Humanoids, but not at the moment, because uh, we're going to do letters. Yes. And you kicked Gary out of his seat. Why? Oh, because you want to... She wants more room to see her gifts. So she kicks the guest out... And, you know, she's, I, I understand she has a technique. She tells them, oh, come look at this, and then she locks the door. And we have to let him back in after the next segment. So most of our guests miss a portion of the film because of this one and her greedy chair thing. All right, so uh, let's do some mail, right? Mail. How are you, Mr. Livingston? I'm quite well, thank you. And yourself? I'm wonderful. How did you like that whole robot thing we did at the beginning? Wasn't that fun? I was afraid you hadn't opened this. Wait, what course. is this, a novel? I can't read all this. It's not a novel, it's a novelette. Oh my goodness. All right, this is a, a challenge. All right, here's a picture of a gun with a doll foot. This is going somewhere, right? All right, I don't know what that is, but we'll, we'll put that up. Uh, this is from Adam Front. PhD, a.k.a. Dr. Blues. I wonder if he's a real doctor, just like one of these musical doctors. Doctor of the Blues? Yeah, maybe. Or like, maybe Doctor Who. I don't think he's a real doctor. All right, dear Vincent Livingston and Tangela, I've been watching your horribly wonderful show for about the past year since I found you airing Saturday evenings on Coffee. KOFY, that's our main TV station, right? It still is, right? Have they kicked us off yet? Not yet. All right. I grew up in New York watching Chiller Theater with John Zachary. It's great to have your show to watch all the awful and entertaining movies you dig up. Some of them literally, I imagine. Uh, a couple of my favorites from my childhood that perhaps you can find in air. Invaders from Mars, The Amazing Colossal Man, the Abbott and Costello movies with Frankenstein and the Wolfman would all be great to see again. I was so glad to see Babes in Toyland. You know, she liked that film. I did not. He, he dislikes everything, so I, I don't even ask him anymore. You're such a pessimist. Uh, when you showed it around the holidays, this week you aired The Giant Claw, which I thought was hysterically funny. The bird was something, eh? 
Of course, back home in the UK, you might have said that about a pretty girl, right? Uh, a bird. Yeah, that's right. We say that over there. Of course, I don't say it here. And if I said it here, she'd say something. Anyway, regarding the giant claw, I thought it was interesting that they got it by firing Mumisons at it. What's a Mumison? Mumisons. You read this letter. Mm. What, did you not Google these words? I didn't think it was important. Mumisons. All right. I'm enclosing a copy of a schematic drawing from Frank Zappa's... Oh, I see. So that's what this is. This is a Mumison? This is a... Mu this is a complicated letter, sir. No wonder you're a PhD. You make everything complicated. All right. I'm closing a copy of the schematic from Frank Zappa's 1968 album, Uncle Meat, showing how to build a Mumison rifle using a doll foot for the barrel. This is right up her alley. You should have sent this letter to her. Uh, it's too bad that Zappa published it about 10 years after the giant claw was filmed. It might have saved Jeff Morrow's a lot of time creating the weapon that killed the monster. Maybe Tangela can whip one up so that if the birds return to Bodega Bay, you can be ready for them. They're already here. There's, there's, they never left, right? No. They still attack. They pooped on him once. It's a true story. That's how they attack up here. They don't bite. They just poop on Livingston. I'm a doctor in real life, but I do not play one on television. And I play the blues as well as, as treating them. Hence the nickname. I see. All right. Well, thank you uh, so much for writing, uh, Adam, from Walnut Creek. And uh, we'll see if Tangela can build the Mumison. What a name. That sounds like something Frank Zappa would do. Indeed. You know, I met Frank Zappa once. Or no, he met me. Oh. No, I met him. And I said, hello, Frank Zappa. I like your music. And he said, oh. That was it. Oh, that's all I got from Frank Zappa. It was a deep conversation. Apparently, yes, because typically he does not give anybody one word. So I lucked out. All right, here is a note from the Cottrells. Right? Cottrell? Cottrells. Cottrells. We've recently discovered your show over here in Texas and have to say thanks for helping us get through these crazy times with your movies and shenanigans. You know, everybody's having crazy times. I don't understand this at all. I'll tell you later. Ooh, yeah, all times are crazy. Like, you know, go back to the days of Rome and gladiators. That was a crazy time. Indeed. You no, know, World War II was a crazy time. I bet World War III is going to be a crazy time, too. Uh, you've won over the whole family, and we are trying to catch up to the 50 years of creature featuring. Keep up the good work, and we'll keep watching. Well, thank you so much, Cottrells in Texas. I wish you would have told us where in Texas. I've only been to two cities in Texas. And they were? Dallas and Fort Worth. Huh. They're right next to each other. A package! They share an airport, I believe. Kitty Nassaro in Mariposa, California. Mariposa. Mariposa. Do I have to do it with the accent like you did? Mariposa. What about her name? Is, is that Nazaro? Nazaro. Nazaro. All right. We've, oh, goodness. This is not for me. Or if it is, it won't fit. I have a big head. Indeed. No, don't agree when I say things like that. All right. So this is some kind of, uh, what do they call these? They're not a crown. They're called a, a tiara. Uh, a tiara. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look, a tiara for, obviously, Princess Tangela. And I shall read the card as follows. Oh, this is like a homemade creature feature card. We do not sell these or manufacture them. So I know it's homemade, unless she's doing that. So it's got a picture of us, bats, watch horror films, keep America strong. I've heard that before. It's on, yes, it's on the sign. All right, uh, looks like poetry from Kitty and Nick. And it goes like this. Tangela, Tangela, you precious little imp. You, your gothic glow shimmers more every time you primp. She, you know, I never see a primp anymore. Your long, thick locks surround your face and flow upon your dress while you glide around the lovely set with dignity and finesse. Look at this. Now that set her nose up. I thought you'd like this little gift to wear upon your head. A lovely spider would look cute, but here's a tiara instead from your vampire friends, Kitty and Nick. Well, that was wonderful. And, you know, she's probably going to wear this all the time when she's doing the laundry and stuff. That would look good. A laundry tiara. 
Another package. Another package. All right. I thought we were done with mail by now. We will be shortly. All right. This is from Mrs. Helen Tufel. This is like almost like the robot's name from Lost in Space, Tufel. But it's Tufel. Rutherford CLG. What does CLG mean? Clog? Clog. Clog. C O G. C L G. It says Rutherford C L G comma N C, which is North Carolina, right? So I'm thinking college. Rutherford College. All right. Perhaps. And uh, let's see, this is an oh something lovely. Should I give you the gift first? I'm gonna give you the gift first. Look at this. This is this is homemade. This is so nice. I love it when people homemade things. Look, it's a snake with tangella hair. Well, we gotta get a close up of this. All right, a snake with tangella hair. I shall read the card, you shall take the package. I didn't know snakes had hair. You know, I think in prehistoric times they did because it was colder back then. All right, Helen and Mike Tufel write, Dear Vincent Tangella and Mr. Livingston, we enjoy creature features and look forward to new episodes as they are released. Your show is fun and creative, and all three of you are perfect hosts. Enclosed is a snake that I cro crocheted for Tangella. I hope she likes it. I think the verdict is in. She does. If you are ever in North Carolina, drop by for supper. Sincerely, Helen and Mike Tufel. I, you know, we would so do that. I, I think we should just book flights and go there now. Or after the show. And have to, can you imagine how wonderful of a meal would be made in this particular area by these nice people? I mean, look at how well she made the snake. I bet she can make some wonderful dinner as well. Thank you so much for the kind gift and the kind letter. And yes, we will come to dinner at your place in the not too distant future, right? Don't, no, don't, don't, don't. Just be, just say yes, just say yes. Indeed. See, I told you. All right, if you'd like to send us a letter of your own, send it to the email address here. Or if you'd like to send us a crocheted snake with hair, for Tangella, use the postal address you see down here. Right now, we're going to get back to creation of the humanoids, and we'll be joined by Gary after the break. Don't you dare go away. The body of the order of flesh and blood is born. The blood pours through the veins. One moment, please. May I have quiet? Since this is an emergency session, we will dispense with the formal rites. Two and a half hours ago, members of our surveillance committee captured two robots at the laboratory of a Dr. Raven, who had performed an illegal operation upon one of them. We have suspected operations of this nature and have complained to authorities to no avail. But this time, a specimen was taken. Captain Craigus led the group in this action, so I'll turn the meeting over to him. Hello, men. About six o'clock this evening, two robots were intercepted and questioned. They were on free time and were released to go to their temple. Approximately an hour later, one of the robots was observed leaving the temple with what was thought to be a man. They were trailed to the address of Dr. Raven, where entry to the premises was eventually forced. One of the robots was taken without incident. The other had hair, no serial number, fought us viciously, and killed Dr. Raven. It's against the first tenet of Emmanuel. Ward? Brothers? That which we greatly feared has come upon us. The robots have circumvented the prime law. They've tasted blood, and there are millions of them. This is catastrophe. Not quite. The large majority of the robots are series one through 20, merely electronic machines. The series 21 through 70, the humanoids, the ones we're concerned with eliminating, 
represent only about 20% of a billion odd robots. What are them killed? What's happening to them? They hold menial jobs that bring them in constant contact with us. Their conditioned reflexes make them imitative, so they want to be a part of the race. They don't feel this is in violation of the code, since they contend that we would be happier on that basis. Is the murder of that doctor part of an overall plot? A precipitant? Or merely an isolated incident? An accident? If the clickers thought his operation was making them more useful to us, they wouldn't kill him intentionally. Then there's no rescission of the prime law. They can't hurt us? There's been only a miswiring. We'd better make sure. And we shall. <laughs> Fellow men, this is our opportunity. The robots have made the big mistake. They've killed. When this news is released to Telefax and the danger's made known, the ministries will have to recognize our petition and have the robots disassembled. The robots are machines. They must be made to look like machines. Dr. Moffat, will you bring in the subject robot and give the findings? You didn't turn it over to the police? All in good time. You know how lax the police are in enforcing laws concerning the robots? We must have our own facts in this case. Won't we get into trouble? Probably a letter of reprimand. The police won't touch us. After all, the only crime that can be committed against a robot is vandalism. Now get them in here. Hello, men. I have analyzed the subject robot as thoroughly as time permitted. He is a basic R34 type, but certain alterations have elevated him to a mid-90 classification. Mid-90? But an R100 would be one of us. A perfect man. As good as we are. He'd be better. He'd be perfect. Which of us could match that? How does he fall short? About the only power he lacks is that of self-reproduction. The highest type improvement allowed by law is in R70, and that in a limited number. What alterations were made? I located and removed a small unit from the thalamic region at the base of the brain. It seemed to be the source. The source of what? We can't be sure. You see, all robots can see, hear, and feel. It's necessary to their function. Naturally. This one could taste and smell. And what's even more interesting, he had a complete human memory. Those refinements are useless to a robot. Not entirely. This one thought he was a man. How could this be? Mankind is a state of mind. A man is no more or less than he thinks himself to be. Are you saying the clicker's a man? Your remarks are deviational. Not my remarks, your interpretation. I'm merely projecting your train of thought. Which I am quite capable of doing myself. Brothers, please. Let's behave like human beings. Dr. Moffat, what test did you run on the unit? Of course, I've only had about two hours to work on the unit, but I tested it within the robot, removed it, and tested it in another robot with like results. And what are your conclusions? Nothing definite. But you must have found something. What? Few surface effects that present only premises. The unit is gray, about the size and shape of an almond. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to go about finding out what it is. I only know that when wired into the central circuits, the robot claimed to be an able-bodied spaceman second class named Kelly. Tests show he was telling the truth. When brought in, he was incoherent. I'm afraid I damaged him in removing the unit. Evidently, they found a way to transplant memory. We checked him through the Bureau of Identification. There is or was a spaceman named Kelly. This robot's fingerprints and retinal patterns checked with those on file for the man. Well, if they duplicated this Kelly, do you suppose they killed him? No. I think I can speak positive on that point. The robot denied it when wired for absolute truth. They found him dead. Well, if the man was dead, how would he have a memory? 
Memory consists of facts. Facts can't be destroyed. They can only cease to be used. You say he was incoherent when he was brought in. Yes, as though affected by psychosis or alcohol. His memory seems sketchy, disoriented. How could this occur in a mid-90? I think it was a botched job. Then we better find out if there are any good ones around. How? Test all childless marriages? The way radioactivity has cut down on the birth rate, this would be impractical. Physical exams? <laughs> Might not show up. This robot even had a simulated heartbeat and respiration. But why? Why put such unnecessary functions in a robot? He thought those actions were necessary for him to live. Can't you see, this one thought he was a man. When we convinced him he was a robot, he ceased to function and became that senseless hulk standing there. Who owns the two robots? And the R-53 is owned by the Ministry of Education. This one has no serial number. He was bought on the black market by the robots themselves. We caught the supplier and brought pressure to bear so the police arrested him. The man is having his identity taken tomorrow. Anything further to report, Dr. Moffat? The most appalling aspect is the discovery of this thalamic unit, if that's what it is. We don't fully understand the function of the thalamus in our own bodies. Unfortunately, that renegade doctor not only understood it, he synthesized it. Unfortunately, the secret died with him. I want that unit completely analyzed. Is there anything to be added? This emergency session is hereby dispersed. Report to your various committees and evaluate this most startling development. Just a moment, Gregus. I'd like a word with you. Or oh, is it urgent? Most urgent. Do you know an Esme Craigus Miles? Oh, well, yes, she's my sister. Residing at 4456 Urban Way. What about her? She, uh... Was she hurt? I wish I could say that was all. Craigus, I have to tell you this. Your sister is in rapport. You're lying. One of our agents ran across this evidence. Due to your high position in the order, he gave it directly to me instead of to the Internal Affairs Committee. I can't believe she'd do it. According to this paper, she turned in her analysis questionnaire three weeks ago. They're usually rapportized within three days. Then my sister's been in rapport with a clicker for two and a half weeks. I'm sorry, my boy. I suggest you do what you can to see that this relationship is voided. Naturally. Certain of our ranks are jealous of your standing in the order. Our plans have been leaking out. This wouldn't look good. I know. I'll put a stop to it. According to the report, she's taken an R-49. They're expensive. Where could she have gotten the money? Well, until last year, she was resident with Stafford Miles. When they signed a mutual release, the settlement was a large one. She's an assistant editor at Telefax. The rapport of someone in that position could be most damaging to the work of the order. I'll see her tonight. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching Creation of the Humanoids 1962 with our friend Gary Silva. He's a Grammy nominated, a Grammy or Emmy? Grammy. Grammy nominated drummer. You know, if you were Emmy nominated, that would mean 
that you played drums on a soap opera, right? TV, yeah, there you go. No, that would be nice. <laughs> no, well, you could be, right? Could be. You could yeah. be an Emmy nominated, Grammy nominated drummer for a sitcom or a soap opera. Yeah, soap opera would no, be. No, no, no. He's, he's, well, he's played with better things than that, and we're going to talk about that in a sec. But first, uh, this film, Clickers. They are called Clickers. Yeah, apparently they don't like the name Clickers. It's a derogatory uh, kind of... Yes, a, no. Yeah. I guess crickets don't like being called Clickers either. But, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking this film proves that we did not have remote control automobile door locks in 1962 because they would not have called it Clickers because that's what we call those now, right? <laughs> yeah, you call yours a Clicker? I do. I yeah. do. Uh, when I first came here, I'm like, oh, what do you mean a clicker? What's a clicker? And, hey, it's the thing <laughs> for your car, mate. This is how you open the door. <laughs> we just call them fobs over there. Ah. Now, it's a key fob. But here, it's a clicker. Yeah. So, All right. So last time we left off with you, you were telling us you lived in a home with musicians, mm -hmm. and you were like guns for hire Yes. for these famous blues people. Right. But you made like a big jump from there. Yeah, I did. I uh, was uh, fortunate enough to uh, live in an area in Marin County uh, where uh, Elvin Bishop, who had a big Elvin hit. Elvin Bishop. Yeah, his hit was uh, Fooled Around and Fell in Love. Right, right. And shortly after that, he uh, um, hired me and asked me if I would be interested in going on the road. And How wonderful. I said, sure. And... Um, he said, well, listen to these, and here's the set list. Right. And, and, and he said, I hope you know how to sing, you know, and I went, oh, no. oh God. So, uh, so I had to, did a crash course right. at home and uh, sang along. And we did one rehearsal before we hit the road, and uh, I apparently passed the... One rehearsal, and then you had to hit the... With yeah. pressure. Yeah. And we, sing as well. And sing as well. You yeah. know, I admire drummers who can sing because... You know, it's difficult, yeah. You're trying to keep, you know, yeah. maybe maybe like now they use the, the thing. Right. Right. But, it, yeah, you, you're, you're leaning, you're right. into a microphone, you're playing, and then you're breathing, you know, and you're, it's, you're exerting right. a lot of energy right. playing the drums and then having to sing, you know, perfectly without <sighs> gasping or, you know. No, uh, I don't think drummers should be forced to sing. Yeah, that was part of the, that was part of the, uh, the deal. And, oh, amazing. Um, so from Elvin Bishop, you went on to what? Um, I had played with, uh, I did a couple of gigs with um, uh, Bonnie Raitt. And, oh, uh, she's wonderful. Yeah, I she hear she's is. quite kind as well. She's a sweetheart. Right, God, right. she's so sweet. Uh, um, and this is before she, she went on to hit it big, you know, I mean, right. it was at the time. But right. uh um, and I was always, I was always working. I mean, I was working, um, even locally, I was working six, seven nights a week, you know. And, uh, well, you know, drummers and bass players and singers, they're always busy. True. You know, there's always a band who needs them. Now, if you, you say, oh, I play guitar, it's like, oh, we don't need a guitar, so we have three of those. <laughs> True. But, you know, a good drummer, a singer, or a bass player difficult to find all right i'm getting the signal we need to get back to this film but right. when we come back uh, i want to hear about this whole grammy nomination thing oh and what okay. that was all about sure so uh you stay with us you guys stay with us and i'm actually wired into the chair so i can't go anywhere i'll see who it is as me do Do come in. Though we've never met, I'd know that you were... Out of the way, stick and clicker. I came to see my sister. Cragus. It's thee, Cragus. Ask me, what have you done? Cragus, why did you come here? To throw that clicker out. That would be a dramatic gesture. You like dramatic gestures, don't you? You won't throw him out. Because you can't. Your answer is no. My answer is, go ahead and try. Don't think I won't. He... He can't leave without your permission. Affirmative. You mean no? I mean no. Negative. N-O. I won't have it. I'm the head of the family. 
<laughs> and I'm all that's left. Shall we take a vote? Well, how can you do this to me? A thing like this. Are you really doing it out of spite? If so, why? What have I done to earn your hatred? I don't hate you. I feel sorry for you. Don't be trite. Be an artist, be a musician, even be a poet. But express your freedom some other way. You know how I've always felt about this sort of thing. Do you know how I felt about it? Did you ask me? Did we discuss it? No. You had your business and I had mine. You never asked my advice. Why do you offer yours? Ask me, you, you have to understand. Perhaps, do you really realize the danger? Cragus, do you think I was better off with Miles? Miles was a man. A beast. A filthy, stinking, drunken, insensitive beast. Miles had his eccentricities, but he was still a man. And that's so important. Pax is more of a man than Miles. Or you could ever be. I'll show you how much of a man he is. Stripped of his sham, he's not very pretty, is he? There, that's how much of a man he is. Thanks, Craigus, for proving my point. Pax is much more of a man than you are. He could never do to you what you've just done to him. You'd better put some sealer on your arm, dear. Craigus, you're a fool. Do you suppose reorientation would help? Help you or me? I think it might make something of you if you're willing to try. You know my position in the order. How do you suppose this makes me look? I hadn't really considered it. You understand what the Brotherhood really does? Perfectly. You hold meetings, wear ridiculous clothes. You tell each other how superior we are to the robots. Because you know we're not. We are. You're pitiful. You aren't just charging windmills. You're trying to hold back the ocean with a sponge. Attacking Pax. The idea. Well, that was stupid of me. He turned off his pain circuits, and you accomplished exactly nothing. I, I don't see how you could do it. Pax and I are in rapport. We're in harmony. He understands me perfectly. He instinctively knows what I want. I just think of something and it's done, because he thinks of it at the same time. There are no arguments. He's dedicated to keeping me happy. And I am happy. You love that, that machine? I love Pax. And it doesn't make any difference to you that he could be doing the same thing for anyone else who bought him. You're wrong. If he'd been bought by someone else, He'd be in rapport with them. I don't understand you, Cragus. You're not supposed to. Do you expect me to be friendly toward you? If you want to be. Well, I don't. If you wanted to hurt me, I'd like you to know that you have. How? By humiliating yourself. You know I must consider your well-being above anything else. That makes me feel better. Good. Can't you see they're killing us with consideration? Spoiling us into atrophy? What would Father have thought about this? Oh, you're thinking of Pax as a person, aren't you? Of course not. Then why do you wait till he's out of the room before you say something that might embarrass him? You know he can't take offense. I just don't like to talk around those things. Afraid of their logic? 
stick to the subject. What would father have thought about this? You should know. You inherited all of his prejudices. Oh, what a flesh and blooder he would have made. Uniforms, boots, little silver knives to rattle. Stop it. Father was against everything. Space travel, atomic energy, synthetic foods. Remember how he loved to tell about storming the weather control station? I didn't agree with him on those points. My point is that you both felt an inherent need to be up in arms about something. Well, Father would have seen to it that... Oh, you both would have been great back in the days when war was a national pastime. You could have fired bombs and guns and thrown spears. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful time you both could have had. And I'm the one who likes dramatics. You could have brought progress to a halt for years. I feel sorry for you, Kragus. It must be a terrible thing to be so afraid. Afraid? Me? Why don't you put your gears in reverse and get out of here? You know that's impossible. I can't leave unless Esme wants me to. Esme, tell him to go. I have no intention of doing that. Well, what do your neighbors think about all this? Those who know don't mind. Others don't care. You've been wrapped up in that little world of prejudiced ostrich friends of yours for so long, you don't know what's going on in the world outside. Such as what? Did you know there have been over 100,000 applications for rapport in the first three months of this year? Our records on that sort of thing are fairly complete. Don't you realize the implication of that? If everything is done for us, there will be no incentive. No need for personal achievement. Even now we're losing ground. Losing ground? Ground. Knowledge. Machines do all the work for us. Why should we learn mathematics when the computers can find the solutions better and faster? <laughs> we don't even control them anymore. The brains are designed by other brains. The robots improve themselves. We don't know how. We give them data, they give us answers. We only supply means to your ends. Yeah, our end. Every day and every way, we're becoming weaker and weaker. And you're helping us over the hill. We are over the hill. I can't stop us. Neither can you. First, there were the plants. They developed into animals which ate the plants. The animals were small, but they grew. And the larger animals ate the smaller animals. What does that mean? So far, according to history, each dynasty devises its own end. The animal develops a brain, and the brain destroys the animal. Our brains conceived you, robots. Are you threatening to destroy us? Oh, no. We are by no means sure that we are the next step. It's just that in view of the cycle, we are the best we have to offer to help you. The cycle is rather inexorable. That's treason. No, it isn't. It's logic. I have to be logical. That must be Maxine. Hey, my name is Patricia. I'm calling from West Virginia. Um, I love your show. Um, I love all the horror movies. I'm a horror fanatic. I cannot stop it. I watch you on my smart TV. So. Tell Angelica and all your peoples are high and everything, and I keep up the good job. Bye. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We will continue with Creation of the Humanoid soon. It's an interesting film, to say the least. Interesting, yeah. yeah. I, I think 
they should have made Star Wars instead. That's <laughs> right. No, 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 you know, it's got it's got robot people. I like the eyes. Yeah, the interesting. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. You know, at first I thought it was CGI, yeah. and then Livingston told me they didn't have CGI back in 1962. So it was probably some complicated form of contact lens, I imagine. Appears to be, yeah, yeah. It's been uh, difficult to see through yeah. this. All right, we'll get back to this film soon. I want to talk about this Ron Thompson and the Resistors album. This is the one that was Grammy nominated. Yes, 1987. My goodness, yeah. 1987. He's playing, what is that, a, a Strat or a Telecaster? It's a Strat, yeah. It's a Stratocaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to play a Strat. I broke it, so I had to get something else. Mm. I did not get another Stratocaster. So, Gram you went to the Grammys. Yes. And you stood there, and you heard your names, and then somebody else got yeah. the bloody thing. Yeah. Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. That's never <laughs> yeah. happened to me, but I would hate it if that happened to me. Yeah, so I... I uh yeah, we were disappointed, but we, you know, we figured it was a long shot. You, you know, know, to be nominated is almost as good as winning. In fact, in some ways, it's better because then you don't have to deal with the people, the press. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And, I, and you I, still get to go to the party. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I went recently. Uh, I, I, in fact, due to this be, being nominated, you then become a member, a voting member of the academy. You oh, you know? do. Yeah. So I still vote, oh. but. Um, uh, I went. I went to uh, the Grammys a few years ago. In fact, my friend Charlie Musselwhite, uh, who lives locally, uh, was nominated and won. He's wonderful. He should yeah. have. Yeah. And so, uh, but I met. Uh, I was there saying hello to an old friend that I hadn't seen that I'd played, you know, an old blues musician, and I, we hugged. I said, "Okay, good to see you." And I backed up and I bumped into someone and I turned around. And I said, "Oh, excuse me," and it was Ringo Starr. The Ringo Starr. Ringo. And I said, I just choked up, I froze, and I said, you're the reason I'm here. And he says to me, he goes, well, I hope you don't hold that against me. You know, and then we chuckled and oh we laughed. Goodness. And he shook my hand, introduced himself, and I did as well. He had his wife, Barbara Bach, and, and, uh, and he says, well, good luck to you, and cheerio. And I have a Ringo Starr story. His nephew's wife used to do my hair. Oh, wow. Right. Starkey is his actual name. Yes. Yeah. Starkey. You know, I always thought Ringo Starr, oh, he wants to be a star, so he called himself Ringo Starr. But it's actually Starkey. Mm -hmm. So he just took off a piece of his name. Yeah, no, she's too my. Yeah. She's good. She's yeah. Good. Well, how fun. All right. Let's say we get back to this film, and then uh, when we get back, uh, I, I want to see your drumsticks. Oh, okay. You didn't bring your kit, but I want to see your sticks. So we're going to see drumsticks when we come back. You okay. know, I used to play drums. All right. Not very good. All right. <laughs> See you on the other side of the break. Who the hell is Maxine? The girl I work with down at Telefax. Does she usually come calling at 2.30 in the morning? You did. Well, that was because of your idiotic alliance. What's she here for? To help us celebrate. Celebrate what? My rapport, darling. My rapport. And if you're going to continue being antagonistic to it, I wish you'd leave, now. Maxine, how are you? Fine. You must be Pax. You must be right. You're too lovely to be wrong. Here, let me take your surcoat. Thanks. Hi, S. Hello, Maxine. Come in. Pax, you're wonderful. He's so glib, I'll bet he even has a sense of humor. He'd better have. I paid extra for it. Say something funny, Pax. Don't put me on, dear. I have a sense of humor, but I'm not creative. Maxine, you're late. Only two hours? For me, that's almost early. Really, I am sorry. I was called back to the office. A report came in that an R-34 had killed a human being. You can imagine what a stir that caused. Craigus, your eyes are sticking out like a snail's. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is my brother, Craigus. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. Esme's told me about you. Well, she's never told me about you. I didn't mean that to be as tactless as it sounded. I only meant that if she had, I would have arranged to meet you sooner. You did. At 6.33 last evening, outside Telefax. I remember. I'm flattered that you remembered, too. 
Oh, and I want to apologize if I seem rude. You should be flattered, Maxine. This is the first time I've seen the Kragis react as if a woman were anything other than a, a poorly designed man. Between my career and my voluntary work for the Order, I haven't had too much time on my hands. I'm surprised to find a flesh and blood are here. Is the Brotherhood becoming less hidebound? I... no, I... What would you like to drink? I'll have what the Kragis is having. Coming right up. Well, what kind of work do you do at Telefax? Bottom rung, the rooting room. But I'll have you know that I have eight robots and a real live girl under me. Most impressive. And they promised to promote me to research next month. Maxine is an authority on political science. Her father's a director at the Ministry of Politics. Something I've wondered about. Things are run by the hierarchy of ministries. What is the exact function of the Ministry of Politics? With the coordination of the other ministries. Then, too, they service the selector. Politics was once the means of choosing the leaders. Now, the machines do it. Machines merely analyze the data given to them by us. The leaders are selected as a result of that analysis. Do you know how the machine analyzes the data? I... Well... Well, no, not exactly. Then how do you know if the father-mother uses all the data you give it? How do you know whether or not supplementary data is considered? We... We don't. Then you might almost say that the machines elect the leaders, that the Ministry of Politics is expendable. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm circuited to be logical and yet not to offend. That sometimes poses an insoluble problem. I understand. You see what I mean? Please. I've given you a negative feeling. I must apologize. Well, didn't you realize, recognize that possibility? I've embarrassed your guests. Shall I turn myself off? You only said what I thought. This is impossible. Tragus, we fall in love when we see a part of ourselves reflected in another person. In the rapport operation, a part of me became Pax. I won't discuss this any further. And I won't hear of it any further. I must go now. May I go with you? You find this atmosphere uncomfortable? I'm fascinated by it. And by you. May I? Would you? But you just got here. Esme, I know this sounds silly, but I really just came by to apologize for being so late. I'll come again later this week, and on time. It's almost three now. Congratulations. I know you'll be very happy. Thanks, Maxine. There are still a few little adjustments to be made. No. Pax was right. And so are you. I hope I didn't... You didn't. This matter is far from closed. I'll speak to you tomorrow. As different as our viewpoints are, psychologically, philosophically, in every way, do you think it will help any? Craigus, please don't dislike me too much. Nobody asks to be created. Good night. Good night, darlings. <laughs> what is it, dear? <laughs> Darling, you're leaving me out of something. I'm sorry. It's the sense of humor. It's a lot more difficult to control than pain. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Pax? For the reason everyone laughs. <laughs> What is it? Irony. One of the funniest forms of humor. What irony? I'm not permitted to answer. I'm contra-circuited. I don't want to make two mistakes in one night. I'm offended by not knowing. The knowledge would be more offensive. Pax. I love you, Esme. Pax, what would you do if something happened to me? 
I am you. Anything that happens to you happens to me. Oh, this covering, this housing might go on and on for centuries. Pax wouldn't. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Telefax, there was a sort of tingle and, and then at Esme's I I felt a sensation of exciting attraction. Well, I'm not a young man. Pretty well past the age to contract, as a matter of fact, but well, I've never been affected like this before. I feel like a schoolboy. I can't stop looking at you. I guess I always thought this was just something that always happened to someone else. It's like Esme said. You fall in love when you see some part of yourself reflected in another person. I love you, Gregus. Don't, Maxine. I don't have the right. The right? When Esme and I were children, we spent the summers on our uncle's farm. It was near one of those old bombed out cities. We used to sneak out and play in the ruins. Summer after summer, months, playing in ruins that were so hot with radiation that at night they shimmered in a blue light. No, I don't have the right to contract with a woman who might produce children. But there are artificial means. When Esme signed her report papers, she had to agree to submit to that. Contracting with me would be like going in rapport. No, no, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. Sure, they say the birth rate is 2.8 per contract, but over 25% of the newborn are useless mutants. The average rate is 1.4 per union. We're losing ground. We're we're in a headlong race towards disappearance. Machines will take over soon enough. As a man, I, I have to forestall that as long as I can. Gregus. Will you contract with me? It's impossible. How much longer would our 1.4 offspring extend the human race? Robots aren't bad, not really. It's just that man can't see himself supplanted without putting up a fight. I don't understand your prejudices, your ideals, but I'll try. I want to be with you forever. Darling, I'll, I'll go anywhere with you. Oh, dearest, anywhere, anywhere. One thing. Do me a favor. What? Tell me your last name. On one condition. What? Tell me your first. After you. It's Megan. It's Kenneth, or it was. When my father died, I dropped it. I became the Cragus. Maxine Krakus. Charmed, I'm sure. 
wife of the Krakus rating. What is your rating? Geron 8. Gerontologist 8? That high? <laughs> You're wonderful. You know, I took quite a chance. You might have been electronics or electrical engineer. I'm just a nursemaid to a Mark 201 computer, trying to add a few extra years to our miserable span. You're something of a contradiction. Oh. Your work in gerontology deals with extending our lifespan as long as possible. And yet your hobby, the order, is concerned with eliminating the robots. They last over 200 years, twice as long as we do. You think I'm taking my professional frustrations out on the robots? Are you? Well, I've been a member of the order over half my life. My father... We don't object to the robots as such. We only hold the humanoids that are unnecessary. They're soulless, godless imitations of man. And in that form, they are not needed. Well, I'd much rather work with a humanoid in the office than have all those little machines chugging about. If those little machines didn't resemble us, it would never occur to them to try to replace us. But how can we criticize the design? The Institute teaches that the human body is one of the most efficient forms of machine. Well, for general usage, yes, but robots by their function should be specialized. Why? Because we can't let them get too far ahead. Frankly, we can't compete with them. So you take your ball and go home. Why compete? Why not just relax and enjoy them? Well, that's exactly the uh, attitude the order's trying to combat. It's shared by the police, the ministries, and the majority of the population. We of the order seem to be the only ones that realize the danger. We recently discovered a most disturbing fact. Well, what was that? The robots are organizing a pseudo-religion. They refer to their recreation centers as their temples. The master computer as the father-mother. When they report there for their periodic rechargings, they receive as well all the information given the computers for analysis in the interim. But doesn't that mean that within a year, every individual robot will be in possession of all the knowledge in the world? Exit humanity. But they can only operate in our benefit. Well, that's rule one in the manual. Tonight, for the first time in history, a robot killed a man. Rule one must no longer exist. Are you always so gloomy? You don't worry about things like this, do you? Well, I would if I thought it would help. Do you want me to? I don't want to change the thing about you. Do you know it's almost 4 o'clock? We should be going. What are you going to do about breakfast? I'm going to eat it. Not alone? Of course not. What's the matter? I don't know. It feels strange. I'm afraid. Someone's watching us from out there. Somewhere out there in the shadows. Craigus? Miss Megan? Will you come with us? This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com The official merchandiser of Creature Feature Accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's drummer night. 
we're, we're hanging out with the drummer who's got his own set of sticks. Now, your name, Gary Silva, special edition sticks. These are amazing. And they smell new. They have that new drumstick smell. All right, let's chat about this film for a moment. The Order of Flesh and Blood. Yeah. That's, you know, that's not a good name for an organization, is no, it? No, I, I, that's kind of creepy. No, but, it, it uh, sounds like some process of business in a restaurant, you know. Oh, we have to go do the Order of Flesh and Blood <laughs> for tonight's rush. Yeah. That could be wrong. Yeah. So you were uh, approached by Vic Firth. The, the Vic Firth? Yeah. He's, the, a, he's a, a bloke, right? It's a real bloke. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. I, That's uh, amazing. I was asked to, I'd been in Japan and um, was uh, endorsing Tama at the time. They, they gave me some nice set drums. of drums. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I went to the NAM show in Anaheim and uh, met with some of the, the Tama people there, right. and, you know, and they they were signing me up and so forth and asking me what I wanted and how big and, you know, sizes and oh, whatnot. Oh, nice. And now, then, NAM, so we could explain, is the National Association of Merry Musicians, right? Something to that effect. <laughs> right. No, it's a show they have every year. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like Comic-Con for musicians. Yeah, it's manufacturers, guitars, right. you know, synthesizers, right. drums, anything. Um, violins you name yeah, it, it I, I've never been but I, I understand it's quite fun it, it is it's it's huge huge, huge right yeah. it takes days to, yeah. to see everything yeah and I went to the uh, Vic first booth and uh, started talking to Vic and we hit it off and uh, he asked his daughter to sign me up nice. and so I said, okay, what size so, what size do you like and you know nylon. so the scientists at Vic Firth consulted with you and you told them the exact measurements and how, how large the tip and everything should be, right? Well, not quite that in depth, yeah, but, yeah. They, but they were uh, very accommodating. I mean, you know, uh, different fonts if you wanted different fonts, oh, nice. you know, and right. so forth on the stick. I, I just recently learned about fonts. Ah. Right. Yeah, I used to call them typefaces and it's, oh, they're okay. called fonts. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in the UK, they're called founts. Fountains. Like fountain pen. Ah. Yeah. That could just been my family that did that. You know, <laughs> my family did some strange things. It's you never know. I always have to like look it up in Wikipedia. So you got your own drumsticks. You represented Tama. Yes. What about symbols? What kind of symbols do you use? Uh you know, I was using Zildjian's right. at the time, uh, which I Famous liked. Famous brand. Yeah. Right. And then uh, uh, after a few years the endorsement, you know, they you know, I I had someone else approach me. Right. And so um, I started using, um, a friend of mine turned me on to paiste, or paste. Yeah, you know, I always call those pasty, and I understand that's inappropriate to say. Yeah, well, <laughs> depending in mixed company, I, At the perhaps. time, I did not know what a pasty was, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I understand they sound quite nice, God, though. They're great, right. they're great, right. yeah. Nice. I, uh, brass. I really liked them. You're, yeah. You have your own brass section. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Is it time to finish it, Tom? We finish it? All right, we're going to finish this film, and then uh, we're going to find out what you're doing next, right? Okay. All right, so uh, you stay here. I'll stay here. You guys don't go away except for popcorn or to use the loop. See you soon. And why should the Order suspect you particularly? First, it was the anti-robot rally. I was handling it and the propaganda pamphlets failed to arrive in time. I handled that. Craigus told me the plans during one of his interviews. The information was relayed to the automation device at the printing plant. It arranged for the press to break down. That could hardly be blamed on you. Was there something else? I was to lobby a bill through with the Ministry of Robotics get them to set up recharging stations separate from the computers. We wanted to halt the interchange of information. That was my assignment. As soon as I learned the plans from Kragus, I managed to have the motion pigeonholed. Then there was the premature explosion of the bomb at Telefax. His pattern of failure would be sufficient to cause suspicion. My position in the order is jeopardized for another and bigger reason. 
What is that? My sister is in rapport. With the robot Pax, their personalities were melded 18 days ago. Perhaps Pax should be reconditioned to become unsatisfactory. Then she will discard him. Not wise. Craigus' sister is an editor at Telefax. Pax is especially indoctrinated in Morfield's suggestion. Each time she sleeps, she is made more sympathetic to our cause. Why didn't you warn us about the raid on Dr. Raven's laboratory? My suspicions were first aroused at 6.30. The raid took place at 10 o'clock. I had no interview time in between. I must warn you, aside from these interview periods, I'm a very dangerous obstacle to you. If the order suspects him, it might be wise if we got him to resign. That's easier said than done. That's right. He's pretty ardent about the Brotherhood. Knowing the way he feels about robots, it's doubtful he'll act on any advice from us when he's himself again. But he's in danger. The Order will take his identity away if they catch him. They'll get a real surprise if they open him up. One thing worries me. There are several million people in the city and only 15 R-96s. How did these two happen to get together? There's always the mathematical possibility of coincidence. So slight as to be negligible. It's possible that their identical operations might have created a subconscious affinity which would draw them together. We'd better check that out. Their effect on each other was most interesting. When we picked them up, they were kissing. That's understandable. Raven never tampered with instincts. You say the Order is now aware of the thalamic operation? They know it is being done. They don't know how. What are they going to do with Mark and the volunteer? They will both be disassembled. The father, mother. Yes? Dr. Raven is out here. He has recovered from the transplant and has filtered in. He requests an immediate audience. Have him come right in. I'm Dr. Raven, a younger Dr. Raven, as you promised. Who's in charge here? I was. But according to our agreement, I'm more than happy to turn the responsibility of this project over to you. I remember these two. They were done right at the first. That's right. It's five minutes to five. Their interview period is almost over. We better put them back in the street before they regain themselves. I think not. He served well. I think he deserves to know the truth, and I'd like to try an experiment. Is that safe? None of the existing R-96s are aware that they're robots. The ones we tried to tell ceased to function. They ceased to function because they were without faith and hope. Important elements to humans. To die and be resurrected as a robot is a deep shock. The sudden realization that they are experiencing all the emotions of a human and yet are mechanical is an even deeper shock. Their future becomes hopeless. But what hope can you offer them? I just completed the final stages of an experiment prior to my recent death and recreation. Will it work for her too? I think so. Her job at Telefax is medial. She's never been able to offer helpful information. We can study their reaction. It will give us an idea of the length of acclimation period necessary. Be prepared to draw them off for transplant in case the reaction is negative. We'll raise the tubes one at a time. Your clickers. Your terminology is crude. But your conclusion is correct. 
More exactly, we are the Robot Central Committee for the Preservation of Mankind. Preservation? <laughs> what have you done with her? She'll return it almost any time now. Who the hell are you, and what do you do with these mechanized mannequins? I'm Dr. Raven. You came to my laboratory last night. I'm told. You're lying. Dr. Raven was an old man, and he was dead. I didn't like being old and dead. We must take the girl out of the Arillathon. I feel fine. What happened? Where are we? Where are we? You're in the temple. I wouldn't set foot in this filthy machine shop even if it weren't illegal for me to be here. Now, why were we forced to come here? You weren't forced. You were invited. Why don't you calm down, Craigus? You know me? Quite well, as a matter of fact. You had the Surveillance Committee of the Order of Flesh and Blood. So that's it. Well, let me tell you and these clickers something. I just met this girl tonight. She knows nothing about the Order. Let her out of here right now. No. No, I won't go without you. I think I'll open up a few of you clickers. We're being held here against our will. I'll personally see to it that each of you are disassembled. And you, you imposter. I'll have your memory pulled so fast you'll never forget it. You may leave it any time you wish. I should have expected something like this after that clicker murdered the real Dr. Raven last night. You didn't bring us here just to let us go. The murder of Dr. Raven was both unfortunate and unnecessary. That attitude in a robot can get you divided into components. Perhaps. Krigus, are you familiar with the R-96? The order knows they exist. And we know that you were... The real Dr. Raven was instrumental in their construction. Creation of an R-96 requires a modified humanoid-type robot and the body of a human being, which has been dead less than six hours. What do you do? Change brains? <laughs> in effect. We perform a thalamic transplant, but that's a misnomer. We draw off everything that makes a man peculiar to himself. His learning, his memory, these interreacting constitute his personality, his philosophy, capability and attitude. The human brain is merely the vault in which the man is stored. And not a very ingenious vault. Ingenious enough to create you clickers. Creation is only the result of the fusion of facts which haven't been previously related. Fascinating. There's one other point that may be of interest to you. What? Tell him. Kragus, you are a robot. A clicker? Me? <laughs> now, isn't that something? Now that you've found yourself capable of murder, I don't suppose anything as minor as an insult would offend your circuits. Kragus. There are only 15 robots on this planet capable of acting against a human being. You are one of them. Maxine is another. Look, you can tell the world I'm a clicker, but you can't tell me. Kragus, they think we're something or someone else. Well, that's exactly what's happened. And you've made some pretty damaging admissions. Clicker, you're in trouble. Horace, would you prove the status of our friend, Kragus? Proceed! This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned.
Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Don't be afraid, Kragus. Take it out. The blade, Kragus. Look at the blade. Didn't feel a thing. Reflex action. Cut off your pain relays. I'm no clicker. R96, anything. I hate robots. I'm a leader in the order of flesh and blood. And the only robot who can claim that distinction. I don't know what you talk. I'm me. I. I was a child. I, I grew up. I remember it all. I, I had little hands. They grew larger. I grew up. I, I can hate. I can kill. I'm a man. Craigus, think back six months ago. Do you remember a certain day at your laboratory, the day you blacked out? Of course, sir. Been working hard. My work in the day, the order at night, I, I must have fainted. But I got back to my apartment. I thought very well the next day. That day, Craigus, you suffered a cerebral hemorrhage. You died. I died. You performed that operation on me. The father and mother informed us of your death immediately. We were able to retrieve your body before it was discovered. And the police informed of the fact. You were duplicated and transferred. This is some sort of a joke. The idea takes some getting used to. Me. The Kragus. A clicker. That's right, Kragus. We're clickers. And you're handling it quite well. Of course, you've had six months to acclimate. It's not really impossible, is it? Kragus, what is he talking about? Don't worry about it, dear. What about Maxine? Is she really like me? Exactly. Kragus, I don't understand any of this. I'm frightened. There is no reason for you to be frightened. Think back, my dear. Do you recall an unusual incident at Telefax about three months ago? Three months? The bomb in the rooting room at Telefax. Of course. Kragus remembers it too. No, it couldn't have been then. Maxine, we were only trying to discourage the pro-integration editorials. The bomb. We thought there would only be robots in the rooting room. But I was only stunned. I guess I went home. <laughs> He's all right. 
you were killed. One of our robots brought what was left of you to us. We barely got you in time. We did make you a bit thinner. You had a tendency to be plump. That's right. After that, my clothes didn't fit. Thank you. How do you apologize to someone for killing them? What did you do with our bodies? They were of no further use. They were processed. Processed? Did you want them? I... No. In all these cases, we process the bodies. It wouldn't do to have a dead Craigus turn up when there's a live one walking around. It's hard to think of yourself as being processed. I would know about that. But I still have my own face. But my... My hands, how, how can I feel so complete? Because you are complete. A man is only the sum total of his experiences. You both have that as well as certain mechanical advantages. For instance, you can absorb knowledge directly from the computers without study. But I just can't think of myself as a robot. Well, who is better off? The king who dreams each night that he's a beggar or the beggar who dreams each night that he's a king. There's nothing wrong with us, Kragus. That's just the trouble. We're perfect. Perfect machines. Kragus, you're a gerontologist. Your branch has managed to extend life expectancy to more than 100 years. It would be longer, but the radioactivity left by the wars is working against us. Exactly. Births are declining at such a rate the father-mother computed. The human race will be extinct in a couple hundred years. We've been working against that deadline. According to rule one of the manual, we have to operate in the best interests of humanity. That rule has forced us to take these steps. Forced you? To take what steps? Unfortunately, Humanity doesn't always know its own best interests. The material of the human body can't exist with the radioactivity, and it isn't capable of adjusting fast enough to survive. We're making headway. When I perfected the thalamic transplant technique, these clickers knew about it in a day and a half. But if you robots had the process, why did you risk using Raven? Why don't you just do it yourself? We tried. But the shock of dying and being resurrected as a robot was too severe. They re-died. A sort of an adjustment period was needed. Then Raven perfected a way to gap the memory so that the death experience was erased. The subject was spared the knowledge of his new tight body until he was able to accept it safely. He refused to register the memory gap process so we couldn't get hold of it. If they didn't have the thought process to use on you, why didn't you die when you came to? I originated the process. I understand it. I was pre-adjusted. I even made them agree to duplicate the body of my younger days when it became necessary. Your death was necessary? If I'd been taken alive and turned over to the police, my memory would have been dispersed and all of my unregistered formulas lost forever. But dead, they were able to save me and my memory. How long have you had the process? Almost a year. You two are the first full cycle transplants. What do you do now? Wait for the leaders to die and then reactivate them. When the time is right, 
you will announce that you've achieved immortality. When the rush for applications is over, you'll probably be deified. So the machines take over. Craig, is, is it true that there will be nothing but machines? That we are machines? Yes. Yes, it's true. Machines. But you're a beautiful machine. You know beauty. How do you feel toward Maxine? I, I love her. And you? I love him very much. And that's a lot for a couple of godless, soulless robots. Are you godless, Craigus? Search yourself, it's important. Are you godless? No. No, I don't think so. I'm not. Then you can't be soulless. Look, a man may have his leg amputated. Is his soul decreased by that loss? No. Not even a fraction of 1%? Of course not. What if a man loses both legs? A negative can't be compounded. The soul would be the same. You'd just get artificial legs. You've just received an artificial body. A new body. Ageless, tireless, disease-free and renewable every 200 years. I guess nothing has changed except maybe a few chemicals. In effect. Well, a transplant must include the soul. No, only the memory which includes the faith that there is a soul. Whatever it is, you seem to have it. And when the entire human race has been transplanted, death will cease to exist. And birth will cease to exist, too. The most precious hope of every woman. How do you think these two R96s would like to pick up four points? You can raise them to R100s? Make them propagate themselves? I worked it all out prior to my recent death and resurrection. I didn't want to turn it over to you until I didn't need you anymore. Now I don't, since we're all on the same side. How about it, you two? It'll take several simple operations. Hardly more difficult than removing a rib. Somebody has to be first. Self-procreating. It's a pretty sloppy way of doing things, but it fulfills a certain psychological need. Paradoxical, isn't it? I spend my life seeking immortality on one hand and seeking to destroy it on the other. I love you, Gregus. Of course, the operation was a success, or you wouldn't be here. And so ends the creation of the humanoids. Did you like the film? Yeah, she was complaining there wasn't enough explosions and violence in this film. Wasn't very exciting, no. Well, that ending, they're implying like this all happened in a galaxy a long time ago, far, far away. And uh, eh, he broke the fourth wall. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't break the fourth wall, movie people. Yeah. So uh, anyways, we might show this one again in uh, a year or 10. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, you, sir, you've got stuff coming up. Uh, yeah, I do. I'm uh, currently uh, working on a recording project for uh, the Little Village Foundation, uh, recording in Novato. It uh, sounds like a noble cause. What do they do? Uh, actually, a friend of mine, Jim Pugh, uh, started this uh, 
uh, foundation. And what he does is he travels around and he um, finds different acts, different people, different different genres of music, uh, from mariachi music, uh, you know, Mexican you know, folk music. Right. Uh, you name it, and he travels around gospel music, and he records people, signs them, and uh, he'll go to like a, he'll go to like a family barbecue, and there'll be uh, a man with his two daughters singing, you know, Mexican music, and and he'll How listen nice. to them, sign them, record them, and and um, I believe uh, that's like being discovered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. There's been lots of top acts that have been discovered this way. Right? Absolutely, right, yeah. Right. yeah. So, so uh, what about your own um, music? Anything you're doing on your own as far as uh, recordings or? You know, uh, my my friend, I play in a local band, Volker Striffler Band, and uh, Volker and I are getting together, and uh, we're about to uh, start writing some songs together. Nice. So, uh, you're um, woodshedding. Absolutely, yeah. I can't. Got to. You have right. to. Yeah. Right. You don't want to lose it. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Website or anything so we can send people. To you know, you? basically right now it's just my Facebook, uh, Facebook? page. Yeah. Right. So just uh, Gary Silva on Facebook. Yes. Right. Sir. We'll see if we could put that up properly. And uh, great musician, great talent, and he knows Thanks. everyone. You know more people than I do. Yeah, I've had some fun. No, yeah. no. Yeah. You know, you think, you know, being out here in California, you wouldn't meet, meet that many musicians, and uh, it's surprising how many come Oh, through. I've had some, yeah. I met Amazing. Keith Richard and you know, toured with Mick oh. Taylor in Japan. How wonderful. Some, yeah, so. Absolutely wonderful. Gary, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure. The pleasure was entirely ours. And as far as you guys go, uh, we will see you next week. Who, who do we have on next week? Neither do I. Well, we're going to figure out by next Wednesday, I think. We're going to figure out who we have on next week. I'm sure it's going to be somebody fun, just like Gary. And I think we're going to have a funner movie than we had tonight. At least there'll be more blood and explosions for Tangella. <laughs> and uh, as for me, uh, I shall see you next week. Thank you for watching. See you next time. So, uh, Gary, this thing about the Grammys, I've never been. Mm. What do you think about maybe bringing me along next time you go? Hmm, um, well, you know, you kind of, you have to be famous.